Grand Theft Auto's import export has been released since 2016. And yet, so many players are not using this fantastic money making method effectively. Now, for you, I've gone ahead and created a comprehensive step to step guide on how to maximize your earnings using the import export DLC. What's going on, everybody? This is Fantica with 100% gaming and welcome back to my channel if you haven't already please make sure to subscribe like and comment as it really helps out that YouTube algorithm now before we go any further I must make it very clear that this is not I repeat again this is not a guide for beginners this is for advanced players only which do have a little bit of money to sink into affording everything that I'm going to be talking about now I do have other guides for beginners that I will link down in the description that you can go through and eventually get yourself to this point. Now if you're not a beginner, this is perfect. Using this method, you can make over $500,000 for one hour in Grand Theft Auto Online. That's a half a million dollars for one hour of playtime. And this method isn't even considering any other businesses that you might own in Grand Theft Auto Online, such as the bunker. Guys, this money making method is absolutely huge! Alright, now if you're still here, fantastic. Let's get into the nitty gritty and let's make all this money. Our main focus today is going to be completing the import export missions as they will give us the most amount of money. After that, we're going to be doing client jobs such as Diamond Shopper. And after that, we're going to fill in the time with CEO missions. After you sell a car, there is a 20 minute timer and you should be able to complete five different missions in that time. That's including sourcing the car for your next sale. Now this might be a little bit hard to follow up first, but once you understand what I'm doing, I promise you'll get a hang of it. Essentially, I'm doing the highest profit missions first. Once I complete them, I look at the cooldown timers and I do the next mission that's going to give me the most amount of money and I work down from there. Now it can be a little bit tricky juggling the times and sometimes it might be a little bit confusing in the decision that I make but it's generally due to not having timers lapse over each other such as the client jobs, targeted data and diamond shopping. I just completed diamond shopping and I have a 5 minute lockout timer before I can start targeted data. Now if you are a little bit confused, don't worry, I will be showing you the order in which you need to complete all the missions. Now we're going to go through all the purchases that we need to make to make this method even possible. Now I'm sure you're aware, but before we can even do import export missions, we need two buildings. One is a CEO office, I recommend getting the Maze Bank West office. Once we've got that, we can buy ourselves a vehicle warehouse. I suggest the La Mesa vehicle warehouse. It is the cheapest. It is on a good location right next to the freeway. I think it's actually the best warehouse that you can get and it is the cheapest. So that's such a bonus. You're going to want to buy a terabyte with a drone station. This is so we can do the client jobs and we're also going to buy an oppressor which makes all the missions that we're going to be doing so much easier with those homing rocket launches. Now I know that all these purchases are going to cost you a fair bit of money. I've done the calculations and it's just over 7.6 million dollars. It's a big whack. 2.5 million dollars is actually buying the business and buying a vehicle warehouse. The rest is spending on the terabyte and 3 million on the oppressor. Now if you don't have the oppressor, you can do it with a buzzard, but seriously save up for the oppressor, it makes it so much quicker. You have to buy the terabyte so you can do the client missions and you have to buy the two other buildings in order to do import X. I'm going to assume that you already have your vehicle warehouse set up with 10 standard range and 10 mid range cars and you're only going to be sourcing top range cars. If this isn't the case, you got to do that before this method will work. Select the car you want to sell and we always want to select the specialist deer, it gives us the highest amount of money. When I'm going through the customization, I always like to do it just really, really quick. It doesn't matter what the car looks like, it doesn't change the value or anything. I just pick the option, quickly pick the customization that I want and I'm done, I'm out of there. As you saw, that took like 15 seconds to customize the car. Drive it to the location and that is our first 80 grand made 
in this run. Now when selling cards, I recommend doing it in a session all by yourself. This way players aren't going to come and they're not going to blow up your car. As you guys know it, griefers do it. They fly around in their little oppressors and they're going to come after you. Simply guys, force yourself into a session that only consists of you. And that way no players can come and destroy your precious vehicle. Now sometimes NPCs will spawn, they'll shoot you a couple times, but the damage isn't really anything to be worried about. If you are worried about these NPCs, I recommend playing with a friend just in a session of you two. That way he's not going to blow up your car, NPCs won't spawn to ruin your day. Alright, so you're delivering your vehicle and hopefully you haven't damaged it too much like I have. Ideally, you want to get absolutely zero damage on this vehicle, netting you a profit of $80,000. After our sale mission, we want to jump into our terabyte. Here, we're going to start up the client job diamond shopping. Now, this only unlocks if you have the drone station. It's a really quick and fun mission, and it rewards us with about $31,000. Now, the mission is going to tell you to enter the driver's seat of the terabyte. It's going to want you to... Now, when you start this mission, it is going to tell you to jump in the terabyte and drive over to the building. It wants you to use the drone. We're not going to do that. We're just going to fly over there with the oppressor. Once you make it to the Frangelico Diamond Shop, just start blowing everything up with the oppressor. There's this group sex van. Take that out and then land it because it's time to go into the jewelry store. The doors are bulletproof for some strange reason, so you can't shoot through them. But yeah, take out the guards. Take out the guard holding the money, he is the group sex guard, and immediately run back to your oppressor and jump on it because the police will be after you. Now the oppressor is great for this, it lets you to get away really quick, but also the game will notify other players in the session that you have the diamonds. Once you have the diamonds, just fly up high, avoid the police, and make your way over to the vineyard. Now we are just flying over to the vineyard now, and as you can see, we've completed this mission in just under 3 minutes. Meaning we got about $10,000 per minute. After selling the diamonds, we want to wait. After selling the diamonds, we want to make our way back into the city to start headhunter. We want to start headhunter in the city, so all of the targets appear in the city rather than out in the country, and such as places like Polito Bay, it makes this mission so much quicker. And I'm sure you already know how to complete this mission, so we don't need to talk about it too much. Alright, so we're at the last headhunter target right now, and boom, completed an easy 20 grand. After completing Headhunter, we want to go back to the Terabyte and we want to source another vehicle. This is for two reasons. One, we need a vehicle so we can sell it. And two, all the other missions that we actually want to try and do to make money are on a cooldown. Target data should still be on the cooldown as it is a client job and it has a five minute timer. And as we just completed Headhunter, there's also a five minute timer before we can start another CEO mission. Now I am at my office because my terabyte timer was on cooldown. Alright, so I'm in the process of sourcing my first high-end vehicle and I have the cops on me. Now you can actually call Lester on your mobile phone and he will get rid of the police for you. Either for free or for $500. Seriously, spend the $500, it's going to save you so much money in the long run. Now some missions do take longer than others, just be aware of that fact. Alright, so we've just delivered our source car, and of course you want to try and not damage that as well. Now after that, we're going to jump back on our, on our presser, we're going to go to SecuraServe, and we are going to start some VIP work. Now you've got to find that Headhunter should still be on a timer. If it's not, go ahead and do that. If it is, it's time to start a hostile takeover. Now always start at the LSIA, it's going to be the closest location so you don't have to fly as far. It's a really easy mission, all you have to do is fly to the location, take out a few dudes, collect the briefcase and fly it to the location on the map. Now many of you are probably questioning why I'm doing hostile takeover instead of Sightseer. And the reason is it's so much quicker than Sightseer is, in turn, making it more profitable. Now, sometimes I get stuck on one of the mini games trying to find the number, sometimes for 30 seconds. Sometimes Sightseer will take me to Polito Bay, making Sightseer take sometimes seven or eight minutes. That's so much longer than what it takes to complete Hostile Takeover. Now, yes, sometimes Sightseer might be kind to you and it might give you all locations in the city, but I don't like to take that chance. Preferably, I'd like to complete a hostile takeover and the client job 
targeted data in the same amount of time that it might take me to complete Sightseer. Don't forget that we're running on a timer. We have 20 minutes since we sold the vehicle cargo until we get to sell another one. When we complete that mission, we get $80,000, making it the most profitable mission by far, meaning we pause everything else that we are doing to complete that mission. Now, if we do sightseer and it takes us a long bloody time, that means we've missed out on the 15 grand from hostile takeover and we've missed out on the 30 grand from targeted data. Put these missions together, you get about 50 grand. You do a single sightseer, you only get 22. Now, after we've completed the hostile takeover, we want to start targeted data. Call your terabyte, go to your terabyte, and start the client job. Again, it's gonna tell you to jump into the terabyte and drive it to the Life Invader building. Do a poo on what it tells you to do and just fly over to the Life Invader building with your oppressor. Now, as we approach the Life Invader building, we just wanna fly it to the front door and jump off our bike. Now, there are a few guards in here, so make sure you pull out your weapon and you will get cops by coming in here. Take out the guards and make your way up to the laptops that are upstairs. There are two and you do have to hack both in order to complete this mission. It is the mini game where you have to find the hidden numbers. Now I have a special little tip for you. Once you've taken out all of the guards, this is when you want to call Lester. If you don't call Lester now, police will actually enter the Life Invader building. While you're trying to hack the computer, they can come and they will shoot you to death if given the opportunity. So, you've taken out the guards, you've taken out the cops, they're no longer going to come after you if you call Lester while you're trying to complete this bloody annoying hack. Now, after you've hacked both of the laptops, make your way back down the Life Invader building and back to your oppressor. At this point, you will get the police after you and the target will have appeared. Now, don't worry about this too much. Again, you're flying away from them. They're not going to be able to catch you. Get to the target, take them out, and there's another 30 grand. Now, after you've taken out that target, it is time to come over to the vehicle warehouse because it's time to sell our second car. 20 minutes has been up. We have been able to complete diamond shopping, a headhunter, a source, a vehicle, a hostile takeover, and finally a targeted data. You should be able to complete all of those five missions within the 20 minute timer. Now I am aware that sometimes sourcing a vehicle might take longer and sometimes while doing the targeted data you just can't find those special numbers. It's okay, eventually you're going to get quicker at it, you're going to be able to get the five missions done like I have. Deliver the vehicle, don't be special like I was there, and get another $80,000. All right, after we sell our second car, it's time to start another head hunter. Now you have to be really careful. If you start head hunter in the area that I am right now, it's gonna think that you're in the country. So make sure you take a couple seconds to think, fly back into the city, otherwise it really ruins your run. I've done it a few times and it really pisses you off if you have to go all the way out. Complete the head hunter mission and move over to the terabyte. We're going to head back to our terabyte and all the cooldowns are currently going to be active. There are no missions that we can do. So right now, we're going to go ahead and source another vehicle. Now, a really handy trick with the oppressor is you can actually start and complete the race mission with it. I always thought you had to use a car. I didn't know that you could do this in the oppressor. You learn something new every single day. We're delivering the X80 Proto with hopefully little to no damage. After that, diamond shopping will be available. However, we want to do the hostile takeover as its cooldown should just be coming off. And again, we don't want that cooldown timer to be stuck with Headhunter. Now, after we complete hostile takeover, it's time to go over to the terabyte and start diamond shopping for the second time around in the hour. By now you've seen me complete all six missions that we need to do to efficiently maximize our earnings per hour in Grand Theft Auto Online. Now if you can continue to juggle these missions, you're going to be making so much money it's not funny. It does require a little bit of brain work, it's not just do this mission, do that mission. You have to check when the missions are going to come off their timers, you have to use a little bit of smarts, use your brain, figure out when they're going to come off and figure out the best mission to do at what time. Now as this guide is set over an hour long period and I've shown you how to effectively complete all of the missions that we'll be partaking in, I'm going to put together a little montage of all the missions that I was able to complete with the time left. 
It should be really easy for you to follow along as you already know how to complete these missions. Alright, and that is all of the missions that we can fit into an hour long session. After delivering that car, we should be able to sell another car and start the process all over again. Now let's figure out how much money all of the missions gave us in total. We're taking a look at our profit and loss statement for the last hour that we've been playing in Grand Theft Auto Online. We did two missions of Hostile Takeover which earned us $46,000. Diamond Shopping earned us $61,000. Targeted data earned us a net profit of $63,000. We're moving over to Headhunter where we completed five missions. We got a crazy $100,250. Finally, the big, big money, the export missions. We completed three within the hour and we were able to make $300,000. Now, unfortunately, we do have to take money away from that because every time we sell a car, it does cost us $20,000. So we have to remove $60,000 all up. Taking away the $60,000, our export missions end up being $240,000. When we add all of these numbers together, we get an unbelievable $500,000 dues. That's half a million dollars for only one hour's work in Grand Theft Auto Online. It is a little bit complicated, it is a little bit tricky, but the payout is well worth it. Let's not forget that this doesn't even include other businesses such as the MC and the Bunker. This is by far the best way to make your dollary dues in Grand Theft Auto Online, period. If you can think of a better way, let me know down in the comments, I want to hear it. Thank you so much everybody for joining me in today's video. I'd really, really like it if you could subscribe as it really helps out a small channel like mine. I hope you found this method useful. I hope you use it to farm some money in Grand Theft Auto and I hope it allows you to buy whatever vehicle you desire. All right gamers, I'll see you online. It should be easy to, it should be easy to follow along. It should be really easy for you to follow it should be really easy for you to follow, follow, follow. It should be really easy for you to follow, fuck me.